So Angela has decided to trick me. I think maybe because I've been such a good boy. I have some new ear defenders. The others were the plastic on the um, ear part here it was all breaking up and you couldn't replace it. Apparently, if that happens with these, you can replace all this bit. There we go. Cool. Bluetooth it to your phone. So you can listen to music off your phone or listen to the radio. We can't really listen to the radio here because signal's not that good. But um, also answer the phone. So how, how cool is that? What's the name? Citico. And bright yellow high vis as well. So we will get mowing because da -da, we still have blue skies. The ground is drying up and the grass is really long. Uh, and when it's really long, the it kind of shades the, the actual ground so the ground doesn't dry out as quickly. So it is still quite wet, the ground. <clears throat> So I'll have to go careful, um, because with the ground being veed, it's easy, sort of, um, the wheel that's in the low part where it's really wet can, you can end up losing grip and then you get stuck. So get round there, get as much mowed as I possibly can. And that way, if we carry on with these lovely blue skies, um, the ground's going to dry out way quicker because the grass will be short so the sun will get to and breeze will get to the ground dried out plus the act of the grass growing actually consumes moisture so yeah hopefully it'll be nice and dry you never know might be able to uh, break the tractor out of the shed uh, don't like going when it's really wet on the ground because you just end up um you've got compaction uh you create you kill off the grass and it just ends up with a mess of mud so be able to start some uh foliar fertilizing because i have the leaf analysis back which is interesting um kind of go through that and show the difference between the jackfruit and the canistel, even though they get treated the same. So, yeah, look into that. Okay, let's get mowing. Good. Ooh, hang on. It's cold. This morning, we are continuing with the tagging. So, tagging the fruit. Um, change of colour. Um, we, we're tagging them. You might have seen like pink, uh, what look like ribbons in the trees. So when we're tagging them, we are tagging, let me turn into the sun. Not, as it were, it's, Let's say each month has got four weeks, but those four weeks, I'm not tagging them the four weeks of April, say. I look forward to when they'll be picked. So pink is for the four weeks of September. These will be for the four weeks of October. And then we'll change to another color for November and so on and that way it means that we're not messing around looking at fruit that are they ready aren't they ready we will look at all the pink ones first and ignore everything else and then on its tag we write uh, one two three four 
like first week, second week, third week, fourth week. And then, like I say, we'll change the colour. So that's my job for this morning. You will see here that the different fruit has been tagged. I'm tagging the stalk here, and that represents this fruit. Uh, the issue I have, I did initially put them on the actual stalk, but I found that they kind of rested down like that, covering the fruit, which may well affect the pollination. So that's why I started doing it here. If I tied it tighter so that it couldn't slip down over the fruit, then you've got the problem of as it grows and the stalk gets thicker and thicker, I'd potentially be strangling it. So these are marked here. We have another fruit here that's just come. So we're now on yellow. Mark it with a number one. And tie this off here. Now, won't necessarily keep all these fruits in, in place. Um, any that are misshapen as they develop, we'll remove them and just keep the one or two that we really like the look of. The rationale behind this will make the picking easier. Any of you guys say, I don't know about other countries, but certainly in Australia, if you know the banana industry, they will put bags over their bunches of bananas, primarily to protect them from being stung by fruit fly and such like. But what they do is each time they go around and bag a new flowering, they use a different colour bag. And that makes life easy for them because you can have somebody that doesn't know what they're doing in terms of when is the right time or the wrong time to pick the fruit. But the farmer can say to somebody, go and pick all the orange bags or all the silver bags, whatever. And they just pick all those silver bags and job done. They don't need to know the fruit. They don't need to know when and when not to pick. They just follow the colour. And that's kind of what we're doing here to hopefully uh, smooth out the picking process so that we're not spending as much time during the picking season wandering around. Is this fruit ready? Check this one, check that one. We can just identify the ones that will be ready that month. Look at the tag, pick them. They've been so many days on the tree and I know that they will ripen pretty much. We've trialled it and they will like ripen certainly within 24 hours. You want to do this every either Sunday or Monday morning while the ground's still damp, can't do any mowing, that sort of thing. Um, it's too late in the morning to do any foliar spraying. So that is the plan. If it works, we'll find out come the end of the season, the end of the year. And it'll be interesting to find out how much easier it makes life for us. Okay, so if I can zoom in a little bit. So the fruit there that's on the side branch, that's very close to where it joins the main upright trunk. So more than happy for fruit to be there because it's really close and there's enough strength there to carry a heavy heavy fruit so just up here we have fruit set now if you were using everything as a green jackfruit that only weighs say two kilo two and a half kilo that branch would take that but it's so far away from where it bifurcates from the main trunk no, that wouldn't carry a, a 10, 12, 14 kilo fruit. So that we will remove. Can't do it while I'm holding the phone. <laughs> One thing that we've 
sort of noticed over the years is that the thicker the stalk, the bigger the fruits will end up being. So a thick, thick stalk like that compared with, this is thinner. You can get some stalks that are thinner than this. I suppose it kind of makes sense in that a big, thick stalk will carry a bigger fruit because, you know, the strength of the stalk and possibly supply more nutrient because it's thicker. I don't know, but it's definitely something we've noticed is um, a big, thick stalk like that will, yeah, the fruit can end up twice the size of um, fruit that's coming off a smaller stalk. So anybody else notice that sort of trend? Be interesting.